Um, so recap from the weekend, obviously great to get two, two really good road wins. Um, I think Eastern Washington is definitely an underrated team right now and they're playing really tough volleyball and, and it goes to show when you beat Sac State at Sac State the weekend before, I think um, you know Eastern Washington's a team that's, that's on the way up. So really happy to get out of there with a four set win. Um, and then obviously could not be more happy with, with getting out of Idaho with a three set win. Um, and I think Tom was texting us after the match. It's, it's been a long time since, we, since we've beaten them over there. And, uh, and I think 1989 was thrown around. And there was, was there a 1970 in there or something? I don't know. There was something about we didn't, hadn't beaten them in a sweep since 1976. And I was finally able to tell the team I wasn't even alive then because they all keep telling me how they weren't alive the last time we did some of these things. And it was my turn. Um, but yeah, just, just thrilled on the weekend, thrilled on the, the progress. And, and really, it's, it's, uh, it's a culmination of, of, uh, of a, a number of things. What, you, what you're seeing is a group who, who are determined to go out and, and, uh, and, and leave this program better than they found it. And um, as a result, they, they, they're attacking practice like no other right now. Um, they know they're on the cusp of something special. And uh, they're doing the work to, to prove it to the, to the conference and to, to everyone around here. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun right now. Idaho game, uh, set two. That was in part of the 100% side out game. Uh, ever seen that before? I, I've seen it. I've seen a 100% side out game. And, and uh, you know, it's to, just for those who d don't understand, siding out is when we receive the ball, we, we rate on a percentage. If we receive 13, what percentage of those do we convert into a point? And in that match, we had 13 out of 13 in set two. Um, which is 100% siding out. I, I've seen it statistically on paper. I've never witnessed it live, and I've never coached a team who's done it. So it was, it was pretty darn impressive. Um, you know, when you got all three pin hitters hitting over 300, um, you know, you, you're in for a good night. And then you had, we had our medals chipping in at 250 apiece as well. And, um, you know, we just, we were able to get ourselves in system a lot, like I talk about regularly. Um, and we we're able to keep them out of system by, by taking smart, aggressive swings. It was, fun volleyball is you know we talk about bobcat volleyball and what that looks like and you could run set two and you say this is bobcat volleyball so it's it pretty good uh, jordan klein just how would you describe her as a player exciting <laughs> we keep pinching ourselves we you know the plan has been to redshirt jordan all along we, that was that was part of the recruiting pitch to jordan is come here we'll develop you we'll redshirt you and um i don't want to say too much but i think we're sitting on a gold mine Honestly, um, you know, she's doing things in the gym right now that we can't stop. And uh, it's pretty exciting when you got possibly some of the, you know, two of the better outside hitters in the conference and you've got a red shirt freshman who's doing things that are better than what they're doing. <laughs> um, so it, it makes me, you know, full of hope and full of anticipation and excitement about what next fall will bring for Jordan. Um, you know, and uh, really just, you know, we, we put a lot of value on the spring. Um, in terms of development of these young women and, and their, their abilities as athletes. And I think what we're going to see out of Jordan is, is an exponential amount of growth. Um, she's, she's, and she's just the best person ever. <laughs> so it's pretty cool to have those kind of kids in your gym. I don't want to say too much. <laughs> Abby, Abby was named Offensive Player of the Week um, after her performance, 19 and 15 kills. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, talk about a goldmine of a kid. I mean, Evie Wilson, you know, if, if you'd asked me what her career was going to look like two or three years ago, I would not have predicted where she's at this week, um, or even this season. You know, she's just crushing it. Um, I think my quote to Tom was she had herself a weekend, and she sure did. I think she hit 390, 395 on the weekend, which are otherworldly numbers. And to, to come away with, uh, you know, like, what is that, 35, close to 40 kills on, on two matches. Um, couldn't be, could not be more deserving of that accolade of Big Sky Conference Offensive Player of the Week. Um, yeah, I, I haven't got enough good things to say about our whole senior class. I mean, Sydney, Evie, Rizzo, just phenomenal young women who, uh, who put their heart and soul into making this program better. And, and it's, it's just so, for me as a coach, when I get to sit back in a match and just watch them work and perform at the level that I know they can, I got the best job in the world. Um, you know, they're, they're just out there doing their thing and to see Evie do her thing just at such a high level and with such a passion and enthusiasm and, and aggression, she's a special kid.
and uh, there's no doubt we'll miss her, and as as we will Sydney and Rizzo as well. How big is this weekend just in terms of positioning? Yeah, I think uh, we come out of this weekend. If we come out of this weekend clear in third, it would be really, really a big deal. Um, you know, I think that's a possibility. Looking at the numbers, is that am I doing that in my head right? Absolutely, fourth. We can come out clear fourth. I know that, and just we're we're battling for a seed right now for conference, and um, you know I don't fear anyone in this conference, but there's certainly matchups I like, <laughs> and so if we can swing things in our favor in terms of those matchups, you know I, I think it's a big weekend in that regard. I think uh, what you're going to see with SUU is, is we drop the match to SUU down there and um, watch the film last night and we'd not play well. So I'm excited to have another bite at the cherry with that one, bite at the apple, whatever you want to say, um, with SUU. And then obviously we, we, we toppled NAU at their place and they're going to be hungry to come in and do it. Um, what you're going to see from them is, is uh, their league MVP from last year, um, Harris, is, is back playing. Um, she's been struggling with an, a long-term injury and, and she's back playing. I'm yet to watch the film with them to see how effectively she's playing at the moment. But that changes the makeup of their, their squad dramatically. And um, so we're going to have our hands full on Saturday night with NAU. But uh, I'd put us up against anyone. Um, you know, like I said, there's no one that we fear. We respect everybody. And uh, I'm excited to go out and, and go to battle. But yeah, it is a big, big weekend in terms of shaping up for SAC, for Sacramento for the tournament. Yeah. We're getting some more big numbers up on the board. Just seeing her hit another, another one of those, what was that like? Uh, you know, She's a milestone maker, that kid. Um, I, I, what's she at for the year, Tom? Do you know? What's that? What's she at for the year, digs wise? She's the second all time in the single season. So she's second to herself. <laughs> um, you know, with a chance of maybe, maybe bettering it. I haven't looked at the numbers closely enough. Yeah, it'll be close. And, um, you know, to, to top the 2000 digs mark, when you look at, like, nationally, what is a benchmark of a great libero? 2000 dig career digs is a big deal, like a huge deal. Um, if you look at, um, I'm going to use a, a direct comparison, BYU's libero, uh, Mary Lake, is considered the best libero in the country. She just got the all-time dig record at BYU in her senior season of 1,790-something. So Rizzo's clear 200, 250 ahead of her. Um, different conference, different level, no doubt about it. But the ability to get the ball up off the ground is the same whatever le level you're playing at. And... Um, you know, for Rizzo to be setting these benchmarks is, is considerable and, and, it's, and it's of national significance in my mind. So it's, it's pretty neat to see a, a young woman from Illinois come all this way, battle her way into a, into a starting role and, and find her way through the nursing program and still do what she's doing. It's, it's pretty significant and special. So, yeah. Anything else? Great. Last plug I'll give is senior night, Saturday night. Come out. It's uh, going to be your last opportunity to see three very special young women put on their Bobcat jerseys at home for the last time. So uh, let's pack that place and do them the respect that, that they deserve and, and what they've given to this program and this school. Thank you, guys. Are you going to be able to watch some of the high school? Am I? Yeah. Yeah, so Thursday's a dead period for us. We've got NLI signing this week, which I'm not allowed to talk about. <laughs> but it's an exciting week. And, uh, and so Thursday's a dead period for us. I'll be in there Friday um, and Saturday. So as much as I can be in our preparations as well, of course. But yeah, there's great kids in the state of Montana. And I've always said, I want the best kids in Montana to play at Montana State. I don't want them leaving town. I don't want them leaving state. Um, and so that's, that's my goal is, is to be out there identifying that talent and then convincing them this is the place to be. I'll tell you what, Montana State's got something special going on. The whole state wants to be here. So getting a few volleyball players here won't be uh, too difficult, I imagine.